Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace. White Trump Impeachment The current political activity is difficult to understand regardless if you are a Democrat or a Republican. We are now in the process of impeaching a president, many believe, without an actual crime being committed. We can look back nearly three years ago when many high-ranking Democrats were suggesting that impeachment should be initiated before anyone even had an offense that would justify it. Although Democrats claim that the current activity is not political, I am not quite sure how else you can interpret their three years of rhetoric concerning impeachment. If you look at what has been said, it appears the Democrats continue to try and find an offense that might qualify as impeachable offense for years and they finally decided that a call that president made to the Ukrainian president qualified. The Mueller special counsel report was discussed as the initial tool that would allow impeachment to be justified. However, upon completion of that report, it was clear that there was not sufficient evidence to justify impeachment. Curious. As most of the Mueller staff were Democrat partisans and they still could not build a strong enough case for Russian collusion or obstruction of justice. Although many still claim that the report suggested that obstruction may have existed on the claim that the president could not be exonerated, Mueller's task was to either recommend prosecution, he could recommend but not initiate prosecution against a standing president, or exonerate the president. For some reason, he did neither thereby avoiding his charter and responsibility, this suggests he also was partisan. The Mueller report took more than two and a half years, at a cost of between $25-35 million, was staffed by partisan attorneys and administrators and appears to have been a total waste. The question is how can this happen? Two main factors were instrumental in initiating a special counsel. The first is a report purchased from an organization known as Fusion GPS, authored by a former British intelligence agent by the name of Christopher Steele, paid for by the DNC and the Hillary Clinton election campaign and today known as the dossier. The dossier was a report that was supposed to detail collusion between Russia and the Trump election campaign. In fact, it was a collection of unsubstantiated information better described a hearsay, rumors, lies and general news collected from the Internet. It was intentionally leaked to members of the government and the press. The second event that led to the initiation of the special counsel was the leaking of information to the press from the recently fired FBI director, James Comey whom had admitted he leaked information in hopes of instigating a special counsel investigation. The phony dossier, the misdeeds of the fired FBI director, and Democrats whom hated Donald Trump and the 2016 election loss were the main factors responsible for initiation of the Mueller special counsel. Not long after the Mueller report was released and determined to be a waste, an anonymous whistleblower reported that President Trump had inappropriately requested the President of Ukraine look into suspected illegal activity of VP Joe Biden and his son Hunter Biden while VP Joe Biden was the U.S. representative to Ukraine and serving as Vice President under President Obama. The whistleblower also suggested that President Trump was holding back loans to Ukraine until they opened a Biden investigation. Democrats believe this was sufficient cause to begin a impeachment, claiming President Trump was using his power of the presidency to influence the 2020 election by investigating the Bidens, Joe being a potential 2020 presidential candidate. Although one could suggest the call may have not been purely appropriate, but one could also suggest it was not a crime or an impeachable offense. Democrats believed it was a good opportunity to move forward with impeachment and so they did. The impeachment activity has been like no other impeachment activity in history. It began with closed-door hearings of witnesses who may have had information regarding the allegations. However, Republicans were not allowed to attend these hearings or introduce witnesses. Democrats selectively released negative testimony they obtained to the press but did not share information that may have been favorable to the president. This again suggests unfair and partisan politics. The next hearings were by the House Intelligence Committee. Republicans again were not allowed to bring in witnesses. This committee heard from 12 witnesses brought in by the Democrats. These witnesses' testimony were mainly second-hand information obtained from third parties, were hearsay or opinion. 
under cross-examination by Republican representatives, all 12 witnesses confirmed they did not have any first-hand information as to a impeachable offense occurring. The next hearings were from the Judiciary Committee. Democrats brought in three partisan experts and Republicans brought in an expert whom happened to be a Democrat. The results of these hearings were pretty much as anticipated, the partisan Democrat experts claimed impeachable offenses had occurred and the Democrat expert brought in by Republicans testified no impeachable offenses occurred. During the committee hearings, Democrats subpoenaed White House staff members which President Trump refused to allow testify. The president contended that without proper notification, without preliminary information surrounding questioning and by executive privilege he refused to comply with requests and congressional subpoenas. The results of the hearings were two articles of impeachment. They are abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. Let's look at both of these. First, abuse of power, the president said we would like you to look into the Bidens. He did not say I would like you to. The difference being, when requesting we, the inference can be that it was a request by the U.S. government to look into corruption, not by President Trump to look into a potential future candidate. Although admittedly this is weak, so are the charges. Second, not one witness could directly confirm that an impeachable offense ever occurred. Third, the Ukrainians never investigated the Bidens and they received their loans shortly after the telephone call. Lastly, the president of Ukraine confirmed that there was no pressure or threat of withholding funds in exchange for the Biden's investigation. The Ukrainian president did not even realize funds were being held. When you understand what transpired, it is difficult to understand how this became an article of impeachment, lots of talk and allegations, little or no proof. Second, obstruction of Congress, the president refused to have White House staff testify as he believed the hearings were rigged to trap defendants. Staff were not provided any information as to what they would be required to discuss, preventing them from preparing, as some information they would have, could have been confidential and not permitted to be disclosed. President Trump invoked executive privilege to protect national security. However, if the Intelligence Committee had filed suite and the court confirmed that White House staff would be required to testify and the president continued to restrict attendance, at that point, obstruction would have occurred, but those things did not occur. Democrats decided they did not want to spend the time going through the legalities required to obtain first-hand information and court orders. They decided it would be faster to simply move forward and adopt an article of impeachment that is totally bogus. Congress is not a court, their subpoenas are not enforceable, therefore unless the president refused to adhere to a court order, no legal obstruction has occurred. The Supreme Court has just agreed to hear this case. Its decision will affect this article and the president's resistance to handing over his tax returns. However, simply by the Supreme Court agreeing to hear this case, establishes serious doubt to the legitimacy of this article of impeachment. Here is the danger in these proceedings. Impeaching a president with the absence of a crime and without bipartisan support, opens the door to flagrant violations of our system. In effect, a majority house could charge a president with any charge they wanted, regardless of if there was justification or not. As long as they voted articles of impeachment, the president could be impeached. Pretty much our current situation. Let's look at a hypothetical. Let's say in 2020 the Republicans takes back the House and retain the Senate. But the Democrat, say Joe Biden, wins the presidency. Republicans could build a case around corruption with his son in the Ukraine and remove him from office without proving a crime or having bipartisan support. This is scary. Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, Gerald Nadler, Maxine Waters and other Democrat leaders have continually said how Solomon occasion this is but they must uphold the Constitution. You would then expect them to be fair and honest. These people have simply taken an opportunity to fulfill their ambitions to taint this president any way they can in hopes of helping them win the 2020 election. Adam Schiff has continually lied about Russian collusion information he had obtained, he lied in his opening statement of the Ukraine investigation. Gerald Nadler has been the worst committee chairman of all time continually restricting proceedings in favor of his party. 
Maxine Waters has continually spoken her hate of this president. We talk about dividing the nation, obstructing justice and enforcing the Constitution. Maybe it's time Democrats look a little closer at what they claim others are doing and start practicing what they are preaching. Frankly, I am not a big fan of President Trump. I don't like braggers or egomaniacs or BS slingers or loud rash speakers, but when you look at how he has turned this country around in the past three years, you can look past his negative personality and vote for his continued policies and success. However, if you support open borders, sanctuary cities, Medicare for all, the New Green Deal, taking guns away from all Americans, late-term abortions, you don't care about the economy, you prefer higher taxes, etc. then I'm not sure I can convince you that the impeachment preceding above are of concern, but the above is factual. This article was written by Charles Patty. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.